Hello everybody, this is Lord Icon doing a mod spotlight of Minechem. I'm um, running version 5.0.5, .5, uh, the current build, and I'm going to be going through some of the new items that they've added along with touching on each of the items that are in this mod um, for this mod spotlight. Um, as you can see behind me there, they have a very nice breakdown of all of the elements. Um, they spent a really good time, or a good amount of time, putting all of this together to make sure it contained every element on the periodic table, and it's quite awesome that they got all that in here. So to start off, we're going to go over to the um, basic items just to go through. So the first thing that you're going to need once you set this up is the decomposer, the synthesizer, a microscope, and the chemist journal. So the chemist journal does give you a lot of additional uses. Uh, you can use it with multiple of the machines, and I'll go through that. To get items into your chemist journal, so the chemist journal contains different breakdowns of elements or items based upon what it shows in the microscope. So I'm going to load this up here and put in a piece of gold. So you can see here in the synthesis machine, I can make gold with 16 AU. Now I can break down a piece of gold, and it also gives me 16 AU. Um, one of the things, though, that you'll have to look at is if I did this for, say, oak, <clears throat> oak gives me a breakdown of cellulose, eight of them, but it only gives me a 15% chance. So that's something that you're going to have to keep an eye on because you can lose the chance of getting items. Um, but again, long term, depending on how you're using it. Um, hopefully wood, something I'll have a lot of anyway. So what I'm going to do is move on to the next machine. So this is the decomposer. What this does is per gold, it says it is going to give me 16. And there we go, I broke it down into 16 gold. I also can do the same with oak. With that 50% chance, you can see I did not get any item. I'm going to grab a couple here, and we're going to break that down. So there we go. Out of four, I got one of them that gave me the 50% chance. Now the new thing added is you can see there's a bar on the left hand side for fluids. Um, you can click this to drain the fluids and I have a drum set up with water. So I can actually go on run that and you can see it's filling up and it's processing H2O down to H2O. Alright, so now that we've got our H2O I'm actually going to go ahead and grab some of the oxygen here. And we're going to move on to the synthesizer. So synthesizer can pretty much make any item. So we know from our chemist journal, if we load that up, we did wood and iron. So I'm going to go ahead and select, or gold, sorry. I'm going to select gold. And you can see down in the bottom text it says active gold ingot. And I'm going to load that up. So you can see that, put that in here. Now I can't pull it out yet because I haven't loaded anything into the inventory. If I go ahead and put gold in there, I can now pull the bar of gold out. So it makes it uh, easier if you have the chemist journal to load up recipes, but you don't need it. So example is if I wanted to play around with cellulose, which makes a lot of different wooden items, I can actually put one in the middle here, and now I have a sapling. And I can pull that sapling out. Now there's different saplings for each of these spots. You'll see there's, there we go, there we go, a whole bunch of them based upon where the item's located. Now if I put two in the bottom, now I've got my wooden block. If I needed, say, uh, I don't even know, there's tons of different things you can make, and I can probably play around and get some other items. Um, or I can look up each of the items. So there was a wooden plank, if I put two in there, and there's wheat. And you can also use this to make um, other chemical compounds. So if I, you know, had the right amounts, I don't know what the actual right amount is, but I know there is, uh, oh, and that was probably it, glucose you can make or some different breakdowns of cellulose into other items. Um, again, the moving to the, the fluid side of it is each of these items that I break down and I then contain in um, a vial form. I can take that item and process it out of the uh, test tube, 
directly into a liquid form. So you can see here, liquid cellulose. Um, it makes it easier in overall storage because I can keep this in a barrel. And you can see I've got a lot of water in there, but I could process this as cellulose and have this pump out. Um, along I can route this item around, and if I could break cellulose down, I can actually pump that directly into here to give me additional items. Um, and in reverse, I can take the fluid out of here, put it into here, and that will process into cellulose back into the test tube. So those are the basic machinery items. Um, you can make quite a bit with it, and you can then make advanced um, different types of elements based upon combining multiple uh, base elements together. So the next thing is you have two big machines. These are some of the uh, higher end. You have the fission reactor and the fusion reactor. And what these are actually going to do, the fission will take the item um, based upon its elemental. Uh, you can see down there it says O with a brackets around 8. So that has the value of 8. And if I take that and throw it in the fission chamber, I actually have it set to auto pull. So let's take this out. Take this, put it into here, and it creates beryllium. So you can see beryllium has a elemental uh, value of 4, so that's half of 8. Um, it's good to be able to break down into smaller items if you don't aren't able to get that item very or easily. So we know we need beryllium to make this tungsten plating. If I go and look at where to get beryllium from, you can see that... If I'm looking at another rack, beryllium is, there we go, it was on there once, and we'll see if it pops up again, there it is again, but it's only a 10% chance, so it gets very difficult to get some of the items that you need um, based upon what is the chance that you'll get it from that item. So that's where the fission chamber comes into play, is again, I can get oxygen from water, put that in there, now I've processed all of this beryllium. All right, so with beryllium and its uh, atomic number of four, we can also utilize the next machine. So the next machine here is the fission. You can see I've already got oxygen in there, but the fission chamber, the fusion chamber, sorry. Fission is the first one, fusion the second one. And what I can do is I can take beryllium with the atomic number of four, take two of them, and combine them together to get oxygen, the atomic number of eight. Now I have set up this full thing, so both of these are um, automated. So if I was to load in, let's grab something out of here, the beryllium, and break beryllium down, it's actually going to load that in and break it down to helium with the atomic number of two. So there's my helium and my output. So that is set up with import and export for getting it out of the bottom. You come out of the bottom of the fission chamber to load it in. You have the item ducted into the top of the fission chamber. Now this one was a little bit more difficult to automate, trying to figure out with both sides, because you have a left and a right side that you have to import from, and then the center to export from. To export from the middle, this is coming from the bottom, so anywhere on the bottom it can even be connected to the walls or the plating itself. And you can see I have sulfur in here, I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Oh. So that's got an atomic number of 16, actually I've already got oxygen in there. So 8 and 8 is 16 for the atomic number, I'm going to go ahead and set this to extract and we'll look at the machine and you can see it is creating the sulfur. Now it is going into both sides, one being the front and one being the side, being the two different sides that it imports into. Now I have this set up round robin, that's why it's going into both sides, splitting the uh, stack into half. So I got one left, I'll have to manually do that, and it gets sucked out and we have more sulfur. So that's how those two main machines work. Um, one additional thing that when you're working with these machines you'll want to keep an eye on is I'm going to switch over to creative mode real quick, just to make it easier to break this. Um, let's go ahead and grab one of those, grab one of those. But you want to make sure you light up the inside. Yes, I broke it, I put light in, 
Um, that's keeping things from spawning on the inside. It had a lot of additional noise with both chambers. Let's go ahead and get this thing put back together. There we go. And we're back to normal. So I'm going to switch back to survival mode. This also has an internal chamber. I do have one torch in there keeping that um, lit up on the inside. It's I hear something, so I'm guessing I missed a spot. Oh, he's standing right here behind me. When breaking down the elements, you will see on here, so on the atomic, uh, the periodic table, that there are some elements. So if I grab this one right here, not that, there we go. Where did it go? There it is. This has extremely radioactive. Um, so you'll want to make sure when you are breaking down items that you do have the leaded chest to store the radioactive items. So you can see they range from slightly radioactive to extremely radioactive. And you can see the, how long it takes for them to break down. So if I look at 11 minutes for this one here put it in my inventory and you'll see the timer starts going. This will deteriorate into nothing, um, completely dissolving. Now for the giant chambers, fusion and fission chambers, you will have to get the blueprint projector. This will project out how to build these items. Um, it makes it a lot easier to build them um, because it gives you a blueprint and it gives you where to put each item. So you can see the fusion reactor 13 by 5 by 13 and the fission chamber is 5 by 5 by 5. These blueprints you'll get from the librarians and villages. Um, so I'm going to take the fission chamber here and throw it in to show you guys how this works. So you can see here it gives me an outline. I can actually walk through this. But each item that I have highlighted when I right click it will go into that slot. So it's fairly easy, you can just hold it down, click all of the items, and boom, it gives you the next layer that you need to build. So I, I really like the building interface, it makes it so much easier to uh, craft multi-block structures, and boom, there's the next layer. And you can see the opening here, where you would need to install the light. Alright, let's take this out of here. So you can see I didn't finish it, but I was just giving you guys an example. All right, so on to some additional items. One additional item in this game is the poly tool. The poly tool is created with carbon nanotubes, uh, four stacks of carbon nanotubes. You can see I have it in my chemist journal here, and it gives you a poly tool. Carbon nanotubes can be created with basic resources. Example, coal. Coal gives you carbon. Uh, this will break down the carbon. Then carbon nanotubes themselves are made with 464s of carbon themselves. So if I was to activate this, it is breaking down the coal. The coal is being, or the carbon is being sucked out, fed into the top of this device, which is putting in the carbon. Once it gets four stacks of 64, it takes the carbon nanotube, which gets sucked out of the bottom and puts it into the inventory of the synthesis machine. Now, coal is probably not the best item to use if you want to do this quickly. This will take um, at least, if not more, full, four, full, full, four full chests of coal. Um, I've already done one full chest, and you can see I haven't even gotten a stack yet of carbon nanotubes. So you could let that process if you got lots of coal. There's other items you can break down into carbon if needed, or you can go a faster route. Diamonds are made of carbon. If you take a diamond, let's get rid of the hydrogen here, a stack of diamonds will give you all of the carbon nanotubes you need to be able to make a poly tool. So you can see it will create four stacks of 64. So what is the poly tool? So I can't grab it out of here because I don't have enough nanotubes, but I do have some already created. Um, but I do want to show you what that does. So let's go ahead and grab, actually that only created three stacks. So 
I may need more now. Oh, so close. Carbon dioxide, carbon nanotubes, there it is. We'll grab one more stack here and throw it in. So here's the poly tool. The poly tool is a universal tool that right now gives you eight on sword or stone, axe, and shovel. Um, there's a lot of, however, different elements, as you can see here, that will give your tool different abilities. So this first row are abilities that add to the, soul, the sword or stone or axe or shovel. So if I shift while looking at this, you can see this will give shovel an additional eight, but it takes away from ore and it takes away from axe. So if I was making one, say, to uh, cut down trees, I could grab, let's see, sword, sword, negative, 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 there we go, axe. And that's axe. You'll need 64 of those items, so you will have to process breaking down. Um, but I can take that item, open up my tool, and drop the stack of 64 in here to give Axe the additional 8 that it needs. Um, that'll bring it up to 16, then making cutting down trees a faster process using the poly tool. I have already created some over here. So this one here is my mining one. And this one here is my sword one. You can see attack on this one is plus 32 attack damage. Additionally, there are, on top of that, other things that you can add to the poly tool to give it different effects for mining, for attacking, for um, different types of things. So if we look at this, this one here gives extra damage to heavily armored players. Here's gives air when mining underwater. I've taken each of these and I've kind of built what are my favorite breakdowns for both mining and for uh, fighting, or mining and a sword. Some of these with area effects you gotta, do got to be careful with because the area of effect will impact you. So this one here creates effect of poison. You potentially could get poison while fighting somebody. So be careful with what you put on it. Um, there are some that give you extra... Um, XP when fighting, there are some that give you additional uh, drops, and this one right here is my sword one, and so this one is my mining one, and you can see kind of I've thrown all of these different stacks in there to give the best output I could possibly do. So this one here will mine quickly, you can see it mined multiple, the whole stack of them. On top of that, All right, so it mined a whole stack of them. On top of that, it will give additional drops for items. You can see it is mining faster, and I have it set up to give me additional experience points when mining. With, there's one with gold that will make it so it smelts the gold. So you can see here I got five gold out of two of those, and I got a block. Same with diamonds. It will give me additional drops sometimes. That one only gave me one. Um, it also is lighting up the area, so if I if it was dark in here and I was to mine this and there wasn't a torch, it may put a torch down for me, which is kind of cool when you're mining in the dark. And then one that I feel that's a need is the one that tells you when lava is below. So you can see in the text down in the corner, warning lava underneath. There is lava down there. Um, I've placed that down there so we could see the warning message itself. So that's for the um, mining piece of it. I'm going to go ahead and grab a zombie. Or a few of them. All right. So which one is my sword? The first one here. Uh... So of course I grabbed the little dude. And I switched to the wrong one. So let's put this one up here. Another one. There we go. So what I have, as you can see, instead of rotten flesh, it dropped meat. It did kill him in one kill, and I have additional beheading. Um, and it will also uh, catch them on fire. So, on fire, additional drops, and I'm getting cooked steak out of the deal. So, overall, this tool can be very useful, um, depending on how you've set it up, what items you've used. 
Um, it's also fun to play with. There are some that make things float in the air um, or shrink back down. You can then combine things together to make it so things catch on fire and then they explode. A um, lot of different combinations. The last part I'm going to cover are some different items that you can use to drink. So this says aspirin, but I think I ended up making penicillin. I did, correct. So I labeled that incorrectly, but this is an automation setup to take sulfur. The second block here would be feathers. Third one would be ink. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to output penicillin. So I already have that in this journal. I have all of my item ducts set up, so I'm going to process a little bit of sulfur here. There we go. And how many do we have? We got seven in there. I'll take those out. And then we're going to process a little both of these. So we're taking feather. Feather does give us water. It will take this water and break it down into its base elements of um, hydrogen and oxygen. Those are all then getting fed into here, which when it gets enough items will output uh, penicillin. So I think it's waiting on, let's see, it's got sulfur, a ah, little bit of carbon. So to get a little bit of additional carbon, feed in some of that, take this out of here. Because this is ink sacs, which gives me black carbon. Black carbon breaks down then into hydrogen carbon. And we now have enough carbon in here. Not yet. Oh, there we go. It made one penicillin. These can be drank um, to give you different types of effects. So here's regeneration. Now, some of them don't actually say what they do, but some of them you can see show effect. So this one here, THC, nausea, hunger, slowness, and regeneration. So overall, I'm not sure the benefit. Um, here's one that gives you nausea and night vision. Uh, here's a cure-all for the aspirin. The aspirin will cure all your effects and give you uh, regeneration. So again, if you're drinking stuff, if I take THC here and I grab an aspirin, should be able to drink that. I now have hunger and slowness. And drink my aspirin. All the effects are now gone. So it helps clear that off. So there are some that are not mentioned. You'll need to play around with what's in there. Um, but it's definitely helpful in the long run. And that's why I set this one up to set it, do penicillin. So I can auto-create my penicillin in this little factory line. Um, so I could always have some on hand. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the mob spotlight for Mind Chem and uh, go out there and download it, try it out, and uh, hope you guys enjoy. Thanks.